Hello everyone. Today's Gospel begins with some people telling Jesus about a massacre committed by Pilate. We do not know much about this incident because there is no other historical reference to the event. But biblical scholars say that the massacre refers to the uprising of Galilean Jews against imperial Rome and among the victims killed by Pilate's soldiers were those who were offering sacrifices at the temple. As the people were recounting the cruelty of the incident, Jesus, as he always did, knew what was coming next. So he responded by asking them a question. At the time of Jesus, the Jews believed that any suffering was from God as a punishment for sin. Now, the people informing Jesus of this event believed that these Galileans died in this terrible way because they were sinners. To correct their belief, Jesus put to them a question. Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were greater sinners than all other Galileans? By no means, but I tell you, if you do not repent, you will all perish as they did. Friends, here Jesus did not deny the fact that the Galileans were sinners. At the same time, he denied that those who survived were sinless too. From God's perspective, the living and the dead are equally sinners. So he warned those who were on earth not to be self-assured, but to repent for their sin, else they would perish the same way. Jesus himself then cited another incident. He described the event of the fall of the Tower of Siloam that had killed 18 people. He asked them whether the people killed were more sinful than the others who survived. And once again, Jesus clearly noted that the incident was not some sort of divine punishment directed at the victims because of their sins. But Jesus called his listeners to repent lest they would suffer for their sins too. Friends, Jesus then went on to tell the parable of the fig tree. A man had a fig tree. As the owner, he had expected the fig tree to bear fruit. When he went to look for fruit on it, he did not find any. When he realized, even after three years, the tree was unfruitful despite the rich soil, he wanted to cut it down. But his gardener persuaded him to give the tree one more year. This time the owner hoped that extra fertilization and more care from the gardener would transform the barren tree into a fruit-bearing tree. If no fruit was born, then the tree would be cut down. So Jesus warned the people that such an end would happen to them as well if they did not bear fruit. Friends. Jesus never condemned people for their sin. For example, you may recall the story of the woman caught in adultery. When she was brought before him, he did not condemn her, but told her to go and sin no more. He also said to the people, Let the one among you who is guiltless be the first to throw a stone at her. You judge by human standards, I judge no one. Yes. Through parables and stories, Jesus taught his listeners a moral or spiritual lesson. Friends, in this parable, the orchard is the world. The owner is God. Each tree in this orchard represents a Christian believer or a community. The gardener is of course Jesus, the owner's servant and son. A barren tree is a believer whose life has been unproductive despite knowing about Jesus and taking all the nutrients from him but giving nothing back in return. Some expositors refer the three years the owner gave to the tree to bear fruit to three years of Jesus' public ministry, during which he called people to repent and believe in his gospel. Some scholars point to God's successive calls to Israel by the law, the prophets and Christ. Some others say that the number three represents completeness, 
So a period of full opportunity is given to the tree to become fruitful and productive. In other words, God's purpose is to ensure that every tree in the orchard becomes fruitful. Friends, we indeed ask the same questions today as the people of Jesus' time did. When we read or hear of murders, accidents, disasters and terminal illnesses, we are often inclined to search for causes, explanations and are ready to point a finger. When we come across anything tragic, we usually become temporary philosophers and we ask profound questions such as why does God permit or cause such evil? What is happening to the world? What is the world coming to? Why do bad things happen to even good and faithful people? Why are innocent people being killed and so on? However, strangely though, when another event occurs, we forget about the previous one and move on to the next. Friends, but Jesus teaches us to handle such events differently. 1. Suffering is a consequence of sin. It is either because of our own sins or sins of others or just because of our sinful human nature. But certainly, it is not a direct punishment from God. However, God does let many bad and evil things happen in our lives. It does not mean that He wills anything evil to happen to us, His children, but tolerates evil because He wants us to freely choose to either live according to His ways or reject them. He does not stop us if we choose to go off on our own. So, there is evil in this world, and a lot of it, not because God wills it, but because He allows it for a greater and eternal good. 2. These two examples of untimely death, the slaying of Galileans by Pilate and the incident at Siloam remind us that death is inevitable. It comes to all of us, the young and the old, the good and the bad, the righteous and unrighteous, either through disasters, accidents or natural causes. Even if there is someone who is sinless, that person also would die nonetheless. We believe that our Lord Jesus is the only person who ever lived, who was entirely without sin, and yet he too suffered and died, not for his own sake, but rather for us and for our salvation. Therefore, the deaths of others, by whatever manner or means it comes, should serve as reminders, even though horrible and sad in themselves, that we too will die in one way or another. And it is not how we die that is important, but how we live. The manner of life will be the basis for divine judgment, not the manner of death. 3. Through the parable of the barren fig tree, Jesus teaches us that God is merciful and patient. He gives us sinners time to repent and obtain salvation. God especially gives us chance after chance through His Son Jesus Christ, who continues to beg for mercy and favor from God for us, so that we may repent and renew our life in Him. But one day He will judge the unrepentant sinners. So we should not be complacent or assume that there is no hurry, but heed the warning of God and respond to His call for repentance and forgiveness of sins. We must be ready at all times, otherwise a sudden and unexpected death leaves us no time to change. So friends, the message is that if we have been given another opportunity after a serious illness or an accident or disaster, it is a call to change our life. Even after hearing today's gospel warning, we still do not repent, then this sin of ours is the greater sin and we will be judged for rejecting the opportunities. Amen. God bless you.